What's up guys, my name is Khan, and today we're looking at Steam Engine Simulator, and this is a wicked cool little game. It's actually got a little bit of a description stuff here, but originally it was made by this Angie the Great for a YouTube video, and I wanted to look at it because I really wanted to talk about how Steam Engines work, and obviously we've done a lot of stuff with Steam Trades on the tra on the channel, we've talked with Heist a lot, you know, about locomotives and that sort of thing, and this is kind of a really good simulation that we just couldn't get anywhere else, and it's really, really cool because this is actually done with physics-based calculations, which which means, you know, the parts actually move based on the pressures. Now, a few things right off the bat. This is a single acting steam cylinder, whereas when we look at locomotives, they're double acting. Um, what that means is right here in this little segment, once we get this fired up, you'll see, but this is our valve gear. And this has one input port and one exhaust port. And depending on the position of this valve gear, will determine if, if steam is allowed in or if steam is allowed out. Now with a double acting cylinder, we'd have basically, here's our, our piston, we'd have one of these on either side. So the piston usually is horizontally, the valve gear goes across two different openings and uh, it'll let steam in one side, exhaust out the middle, and then let steam in the other side to push the piston back and also exhaust out the middle. And locomotives do that obviously because you get power on both strokes, you get power when the piston's going in and when it's going out, but this of course is uh, it's just a single acting cylinder, so we have to have momentum to carry through. So the first thing we gotta do right off the bat is obviously increase our water with our injector, fill up our boiler with a little bit of water, we can probably drop that off, and then we gotta start our fire up. Now, of course, as we have our water, our temperature will rise, and uh, that's our, you know, our temp in the water right now, and it's just gonna keep going up and up and up. Once it gets above 100 degrees Celsius, it'll start making steam, which it should, which increases our pressure gauge. And as you can see, our water level goes down, and our pressure increases. Then, of course, we've got a pressure relief valve here, it seems. That's awesome. So we could just, you know, I don't know if this is, does this let me set it to a specific... I think it does. See, I think I'm adjusting what pressure the relief is. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely am. Water at 100 PSI, this is kind of interesting. So if we wanted to bring in more water right now, uh, we actually can't, you'll see there's no water flow. And I thought this was interesting because 150 PSI, you know, like we're now above the water pressure. So obviously water can't, you know, if we have 150 PSI, Technically speaking, if we had this system set up like this, and we had 150 PSI here, and we opened this valve to a 100 PSI container, it would actually flow backwards. With steam injectors, it's a bit different, and my understanding from Heist is that a steam injector takes water from ambient pressure and injects it into water at a high pressure. And the way it does that is by having a little loop so that it uses the boiler pressure to actually blast through a, a series of nozzles essentially, which takes the flow and brings it down to a high velocity flow. And that high velocity flow then gets a little bit of water added into it from the low pressure system. And, and then it comes through and comes out. Injectors are really cool. Uh, I mean, Heiss is just an absolute genius. And I mean, obviously he works with this stuff and uh, I've seen him talk about it, but injectors are wicked, wicked cool. Anyway, we haven't even fired the stupid engine up. We've just been talking about stuff. So obviously, um, okay, well, that's that's our regulator. Oh God, we have 350 PSI. Yeah, we probably should, we probably should not have 350 PSI. That would be, that would be probably a good thing not to have that much pressure. All right, so we gotta, we gotta get this, hold on a minute. There we go. We gotta get the momentum built up. Can you, okay, well, we also have a whistle. That's nice. All right, so we have to just, there we go. Excuse me, hello? I have too much pressure. There we go. Yeah, with a train, which we don't have on this system, you can see the valve gear is in a fixed thing. It, it's a fixed position. It'll go fixed from here, fixed to there. There's nothing we can do to change it. There we go, we got it going. And, uh, but on a train, this is where the, uh, the regulator versus the Johnson bar comes in. So if we look at a Johnson bar on a train, a Johnson bar would actually control how much movement this is by adjusting these pivot points, which I think is just, it's super cool. I gotta try building a Johnson bar at some point in time. They're very, very hard to get the dimensions right, and it's just, it's a really, really cool system. But when you get the dimensions right, if you move it forward, the pivot point changes so that this valve here actually would, like, flip and go in the opposite direction, which would reverse your stroke, and vice versa. It's all all done on the valve gear side of things and then you have the regulator and this would be basically our steam chest if this was a steam train as we release pressure from the regulator you can see we barely got any pressure being released we really don't need much at all um we are gonna need water but we're at 350 psi so it's just never it's never gonna happen see like i can open this up fully we're gonna just basically just starve this thing of water 
and then we're gonna bleed all the pressure out. We should bleed this down to like 100 PSI. There we go. And then at 100 PSI, now water comes back in. And then as soon as we inject water, look at the pressure drop immediately because the temperature just goes shooting way, way down. Let's see if we can get this to a steady state. That's what I'd really like to do. So a steady state here would be just below 100 PSI. We're releasing enough steam and we're making steam at the same weight we're releasing it. And then the engine should be able to sit at some regular RPM. Okay, so we're not injecting enough water. Our pressure, yeah, no, see, our pressure's already up too high. I gotta release that. No, nope, get that, get that down. There we go. Gotta inject water, gotta release more steam. Which would essentially give us more power anyway. Alright, get that below 100. Very, very slowly coming down. Perfect. Now we're bringing in fresh water. And our temp is holding constant. So basically we need this gauge to stop moving now. I need more water. That's going to bring my temp way down. It's too much. Gotta be very careful on the ejector. This is like the magical balance of steam engines. But it's interesting this is a single acting engine. And then of course we can use the brake and apply a little bit of load. So this is as if we were like, you know, pulling something a bit heavier. It'll still grind through the brake. That's awesome. And now you can see the chuffs coming backwards through the pressure gauge. That's so great. As it opens up, basically, it releases all the steam out. This valve gear is wicked cool. I kind of wish this simulator had a, uh, you know, a Johnson bar on it so we could actually play with the position of the valve gear. Because that's a lot of this is, you know, with how steam trains drive. And a lot of people commented when I tried driving a steam locomotive with Derail Valley that I really had no idea what I was doing. But that's essentially what you're, uh, what you're trying to do is uh, you basically have to play with how much steam you're allowing through the piston to release out versus how much steam you're generating in the boiler. And if you can balance those two numbers and you can generate just as much steam as you consume, then you have a, a wonderful steady state system and you don't end up blowing your pressure release every 10 seconds. And that's like, whenever I talk to Heiss about it, that's what he always says. It's like, you know, you never want to blow your pressure release valve. And, and obviously when we play railroads in line, we did that all the time. You just kind of let the boiler max pressure itself out and whatever. But in real life, pressure releases are super, super loud. And, uh, you know, as, as Heist says, they very rarely have to do it because they know how to work the fire and manage the steam and manage the temperature so that they're always releasing the same amount that they're producing. And that's insane to me. Like, the amount of effort that would take on, on that level, it's a wicked system. But there's so many variables. You have your cold water, you have your temp. My temp is super high right now because I have no water. So I need to eject, see, look at that. As soon as I inject a ton of water, the temp drops, and then look, stalls out the entire system completely. But I'm pretty sure we would have exploded there because we had no water and we were at 300 degrees. I'm, I'm not positive, but I, I think that would have been, that probably would have been an explosion. Anyway, this is a really cool simulator. I encourage you guys to check it out on Steam if you have a sec. It's, it's a really cool way to just sort of get an appreciation for how a steam engine works. That being said, it is, of course, a single acting steam engine. So, you know, we need a double acting version of this to, uh, you know, really have it have it be uh, more representative of what an actual locomotive is. But it's still the same principle. And, you know, single acting mechanisms exist all the time. This would be more in tune with how your car engine works, actually, because it's kind of a, a single acting thing as well. It only acts in the one direction. I mean, it's a four, there's four strokes generally in your car engine, but it only ever really acts, you know, in the downward direction, right? Uh, but yeah, the last thing I want to look at is uh, apparently if we just smash the A button, yeah, now we get into into hell mode. I don't I don't know what this means. The water is still seems to oh oh no I don't want the drain on. The water still seems to be at 100 psi. The, the, I don't, it's a spiky wheel? I don't understand, there's, there's bones and skulls and stuff? Okay, we are just... Oh, does it go up to silly speeds? Oh, man, it's like, oh, it's just taking off. Okay. Um. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm out of water, man. Oh, no, no, see, because now, look, the drain opens up. This is actually ridiculous. Okay, we're not, we're not, hold on, we're not fast enough here. We need to go faster. Um, 
We have barely any water. The problem is this 100 PSI injector. If this wasn't 100 PSI, if this was an injector like a steam locomotive, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't matter what boiler pressure you're at because it uses the boiler pressure to inject water into itself, which is like a super cool principle, by the way. It's all about speeds and velocity. Oh, I just got an achievement for running it for 10,000 revs. That's, that's great. I need to basically get the injector open until... There we go. There we go. That's it's okay. So I need to keep opening the injector until our temp starts dropping. But as long as we're at 300, we're still cruising. Okay, my injector is almost completely open here. Oh, it is completely open. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's still at max temp. Does this thing put out like crazy amounts of heat or something? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, we just open the injector fully. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. And then we just open the reg, but like keeping it right under a hotter PSI. Oh, there, see that? Destroyed it, destroyed it. Hit that state where it's like, we just, just released too much steam, the pressure dropped. Wait, what happened there? Hold on, we released too much steam. So the pressure dropped, and when the pressure dropped, the water came flowing in way too fast. Right? Yeah, that's what happened. And then when the water flows in too fast, it destroys the system. Because the ratio of, oh, the water at 100 PSI, like, it's, it's being held back as long as we're close to 100 PSI. So if I do this... No, 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 we're still too much water. We need higher temp. That's right, we need the temp to vaporize it a lot faster. Okay. We're gonna get this. I understand. I'm kind of getting how this is gonna work now in terms of balance. If we have our temp at 300, the water's gonna vaporize almost instantly and pour into a lot of steam. But if our steam pressure gets too low, then the water can flow in a lot faster because the water's gonna flow at a ratio of how much PSI we have here versus how much pressure we have here. So if we're at 100 over 100, it should flow at zero. If we're at like 99 over 100, it should very, very slowly flow in, right? Based on the area of this and the pressure difference between the two with how the fluids would work on that. So there, we're maxed at 300 again. No, nope, it's too much water. We gotta slowly, nope. Nope. Oh, I generated a bunch of vacuum in the boiler. Oh my God. Oh, because this is still spinning with momentum and it's using the piston as a pump. I feel like hell mode just unlocks all the stuff. Like, I feel like there's limits on the regular mode and in hell mode, it just doesn't care. All right, hold on. Good thing is I don't think we can blow this up. We generated vacuum pressure in the boiler. I'm pretty sure if this was real life, that boiler would have been, would have been splody splody pretty quick. I love how it's gotten so fast now. It doesn't even look like it's moving anymore. That's great. It can't even like, we're, we're into that whole, the frames can't, it looks like it's glitching out, but it's not. It's just so freaking fast. You can't even tell what's going on. Oh, now, now it looks like it's spinning backwards. Yeah, yeah, we hit that point where now it's the, the render rate, uh, what, the frame rate is the same as the, you know, the, we're actually going backwards. We're gonna, at some point in time, I'm gonna accidentally bring the pressure too low, and then we're just gonna overflow the boiler because the water is just gonna come flowing in and kill the temp. The key is to not do that. Alright, 4,000. See, I, I, need, I need more pressure. We need this to go up. I'm gonna reduce the flow a little bit. Yeah, see, now we don't have enough steam. And I killed it. God dang it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We can build this back up real quick. Just drop that. Bring this back. Oh my god. Oh, I just created a massive vacuum pressure. Hold on. Don't have enough water in this system. Crank this up. Oh my god. It's so easy to lose steady state. And we just lost a bunch of speed. Oh man. Alright. Exhaust. No, 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 no. I need, I need you to build up the temp before we run out of steam. Good. Good, 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 good. Down below 100. Okay, now the water should start flowing. Just a little bit of water. Oh 
my god. It's so hard to get it back to that that perfect state. There we go. Building it up. Yeah, a little bit more steam. There we go. See, now look, as we open the water, we're actually increasing the pressure because the issue here is we're not creating enough volume. We're exhausting the steam faster than we're, than we're actually creating it. There we go. More water. See, it brings that pressure up. And we just kind of play with the levels a bit until we get this guy up to max. But we never want to go above 100. If we go above 100, we'll lose the water entirely and then we're, and then we're done. This is wicked cool. It's actually wicked cool. I didn't really play around with this much. I, I sort of downloaded it, installed it, and, and then now that I'm actually playing around with getting it to a steady state, it's kind of amazing. I feel like our boiler would have exploded now, though. We're at full heat with no water. All right, I'm just gonna leave this for a bit. We're accelerating, and we seem to be at a pretty good value. Like, we don't seem to be gaining or losing pressure. If we do gain a bit of pressure, I'll open the reg up a bit. The water's already full out. So, I think we just let this run. It, it does seem to still be accelerating very, very slowly. Now, the issue is as we speed up the engine, it's going to technically consume more steam, right? Because more revolutions, same cylinder volume, same valve positions, it's technically sucking more steam through the system. So, this should theoretically drop or we're going to need more on the reg. I don't know, to be honest. But, yeah, we should technically, like, we'll see the pressure drop because... Or no, the pressure would stay the same because we're releasing the same amount of steam. Eventually, we'd cap out on RPM because we can't... I don't know how this would work. I think I think that's what would happen. We would cap out on RPM, right? Because steam volume is constant. Volume is constant coming through here. We're consuming more volume. Yeah, so at some point when the volume flow coming out through here is equal to the volume flow coming out here, that's where our RPM is going to stop. Which seems to be right here. Unless we give it more volume. Oh, but then you kill the system! You kill the system! It's too much for what it can produce. Oh, man. See, and now, and now we'd have to reset the whole thing and oh, get it back up. I think I think you're maxed out at uh, pretty much where we were. Because we were. it was stopped there at pretty much like 4150, 4200 uh, RPM. And I don't think it can go any faster than that. Because as soon as I tried to open up just the slightest bit more pressure to get it above that point... It instantly crashed the system because all of a sudden the volume flow of steam we were consuming through the piston was higher than the volume flow we were creating and and it just it just sucked the whole the whole boiler dry but uh, yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below it's a really cool simulator I mean you know it's just a cool way to really appreciate how steam engines work and I don't think railroads ever brought their steam engines up to 3200 rpm but again they also had double acting pistons which means they would have just been geared much more for torque and of course we would have had that bar to uh to control this point right here but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below make sure of course you hit that like button hit the subscribe button and uh you know i'm gonna let this run but i don't think we're gonna get above 4200 i think 4200 is quite literally the physical limit